Good evening, and welcome to Spelman College's second virtual summer town hall for 2021. I'm Mary Schmidt Campbell, and as the 10th president of Spelman College, I am so pleased to be with you this evening. I understand that we have over 700 registered for this session. That's our faculty, students, staff, parents, trustees, alumni, and friends of the college. Welcome to you all. Tonight, our town hall topic is a question I've been getting all year. And that is, where did all the money go? Now you may recall that earlier this year, Spelman College announced a very successful capital campaign launch and we have raised over $250 million so far, exceeding our campaign goal. Also, as you may know, the college was the recipient of three separate allocations of federal stimulus funds. And so the question came up, where did all those dollars go? Let's turn now to our topics for this evening. And I'll walk you through the points that we are going to discuss this evening. Thank you. We're going to take a look at where that money went, but first we're going to look at our budget that started out the year in which COVID started. It started out as a normal year. We started out with a normal balanced budget and then right at the end of, towards the end of that fiscal year, COVID arrived and we had to completely revise our budget. And I will show you the impact that COVID had on our budget. Next, I'm gonna show you the dramatic steps that we had to take to balance that budget with so much loss of income. And then once you have seen that, you can see where we used federal funds to make restorations on behalf of our faculty and staff, and where we made res uh, restorations on behalf of our students with our federal funds. And then we'll take a look at what we have done with the private funds that we have received in the course of the campaign that continued all throughout this COVID period. Before I begin, let me share a few housekeeping details. Tonight, our town hall is 45 minutes from 5 p.m. to 545. For your convenience, the town hall is recorded and will be posted later this week on spellman.edu. We invite you to participate by asking questions during the session. You can do so by clicking on the Q&A function on your Zoom page. I will answer questions in the course of my presentation, and I will call on members of the Spelman College senior team to assist in answering those questions. In fact, some questions have already been received, and there'll be time at the end of my presentation to answer additional questions. As you know, we always have more questions than time. And any questions we don't get to this evening will be posted on our FAQ page on the spellman.edu website. Next slide, please. As I mentioned tonight, we're joined by members of the college's senior leadership team. We have a couple members of those team who are on vacation and I'm happy to welcome this evening, Dr. Dolores Bradley Brennan, Vice Provost for Faculty, who's standing in for our Provost Sharon Davies. I'm also delighted to welcome Dean Desiree Pettisclo, Dean of Undergraduate Studies, who's here to answer any questions that might come up about new student orientation. Next slide. Before I get to our topic for tonight, I do wanna pause and extend a word of thanks to everyone in the Spelman community who has been vaccinated and who has uploaded their proof of vaccination to our eTree system. For those of you who are looking for the where to, to do the upload, go to My Spellman, log in, 
and you should see the instructions to upload your proof of vaccination. One of the questions that came in early was, how do you know who's going to, who is vaccinated? And the answer to that question is, everyone who's been vaccinated uploads their proof of vaccination, and that is how the college is able to, to determine who is in compliance. And I wanna tell you that Spelman is making terrific progress with both its students and its staff and its faculty. And I, I, I put up this national picture of vaccinations because I think it's important for us to know that our college community is part of the effort to increase vaccination rates nationwide to make all of us safe. Next slide. We do have to worry because we still are in COVID season. And the red line that you're seeing is the line that demonstrates that in the month of July, deaths from COVID-19 did tick up. There have been uh, almost 3,000 in, in this month so far. And that's people who were unvaccinated. The green line has the, uh, an indication of those who have, uh, who have died from COVID who have been vaccinated. And in July, you can see that that number is barely registered on the graph. Next slide. In the state of Georgia, uh, just a reminder that we still are experiencing cases of infection of COVID infection and, and incidents of COVID death. Next slide. The good news is that recent studies that were done in Scotland and the UK demonstrate that those who were vaccinated with two doses of Pfizer show a high degree of protection from the Delta variant. And this is the variant that worries us because as we know, the Delta variant is highly contagious and young people are susceptible. But for those who are vac fully vaccinated, it dramatically reduces uh, the risk. So just a reminder to all of our community, we have until July 30th to get both shots and get your proof of vaccination uploaded into our system in preparation for the fall. So now let's go to our topic. Next slide. So our topic for this evening is where did the money go? So I'm gonna start by just giving you a snapshot of what our, our operating budget is or would, was for 2019-2020. And as you can see, as we do every year, Spelman College does a terrific job of making sure that we have a balanced budget. And what does that mean? That means we make sure that our income is equal to our expenses and that we're not operating with uh, uh, in deficit. And as you can see, most of our income comes from our tuition and fees, and auxiliary is our room and board. So the bulk of our income comes from tuition and fees and room and board, smaller amounts from endowment and fundraising on an annual basis. And we expend most of those funds for education and general expenses out of a, of a, a budget that's almost $130 million. We expend about 113 million, almost $114 million for education and general expenses. The drivers are our enrollment, which drives tuition, endowment, fundraising, room and board. And we had a balanced budget until, next slide, until we got to COVID. In March, we had to ask all of our student body who was living on campus, all 1,400 students, to leave because of the high risk of infection. When they left, we also refunded those students the portion of room and board that went unused between March and the end of the semester. That amount was $5.2 million that came out of our budget. That meant overnight, our budget was short $5.2 million and it was thrown completely out of, out of balance. Next slide. In order to put that budget back into balance with the loss of the income 
of $5 million, we also had to reduce our expenses by $5 million. So how did we do that? Well, we just stopped hiring. We couldn't hire any new people. We had to eliminate projects. We had to eliminate consultants. We had to eliminate faculty startup packages. That was a real heartbreaker. In order to pull those expenses down to match what our revenue losses were. Next slide. We then had to take a look, looking forward at our, our budget. How are we going to make up for what was going to be this huge revenue loss as we looked forward to 2020, 2021? Now, before that academic year started, we began, we began to hear news that there may be some federal stimulus funds that were coming our way. And so we understood that there was a high likelihood that in the, the last administration, that we were gonna get a chunk of federal funds that were gonna help us put that budget back into balance. Knowing that, we still had to make very dramatic cuts in our expenses. And those cuts meant, even though we didn't lay off anybody or fire anybody, we had to cut salaries by using furloughs, asking people to take days off and reducing their salary by the amount of those, those days off. Again, hiring freeze, freezes, reducing our operations and our, our, our utilities and making a lot of other uh, reductions that amounted to $10.8 million, but didn't quite close the $23 million gap that we were facing moving forward. So I understand that I'm, I'm looking at the questions that have come in and the question number seven says, has Spellman made any plans to deal with another possible outbreak of COVID? Does the college have an evaluation plan in place? You might've noticed in these budget scenarios, something called operating margin. And that is every year over the past four years or more, we have been uh, allocating funds that we use to set aside for emergencies. And we've been able to build up those funds so that by now we do have a, an operating reserve. The operating reserve isn't enough to have covered all of the losses that we had covered here, but we have begun that, we began that process years ago of making sure that we have adequate reserves for situations exactly like this. So let's go to the next slide. The stimulus funds came just in time for us to begin to plug up some of those holes. And I have to, I, later on, I will share with you that there were actually three pockets of of stimulus funds. So this really, the CARES Act that came in May of 2020 was really the first uh, batch of funds that came to us. But the real lifesaver was a totally unexpected gift that came in from McKinsey Scott, unrestricted for $20 million. And we were able to, to use 8 million of that to help us plug up that budget cap. Next slide. So let me take you through the three different allocations of stimulus funds. And it, was, it has been very challenging because you would think, well, you have stimulus funds, just plug up the holes in your budget and just move right along. The problem is each of these funds came at a different time. The first batch arrived in May of 2020 in the old administration. When the new administration arrived, we got a second batch <coughs> excuse me, in January, February of 2021. We got a third batch with this new administration in May of 2021. Each time the batch of funds arrived, we didn't know exactly how much we were getting. We didn't know exactly how the government was going to require us to spend it. And we didn't know the timing over which we were able to spend those funds. So it made planning 
very, very challenging. But we're very pleased to say that we were able to make very good use with the CARES Act, the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act, and the American Rescue Plan. So let me share with you some of the ways that we use those federal dollars. So with the CARES Act, we used them for student aid and the eligible expenses were emergency grants for food, housing, course materials, technology, healthcare, child, child care, and we, that's how we were, we were required to dispense those funds. We also used those funds for needs that Spelman had. So tech, we used them for technology for our faculty and staff, distribution, we had you know, technology that went out to our students under student aid, but we also needed technology for our faculty and staff who now were working remotely. We had extensive cleaning and disinfecting that had to take place on campus, which we used it for. And of course, we had to install COVID testing. We used federal funds to pay for the COVID testing, for the nurses who administer it, for the lab work, for, uh, um, and for all of the supplies that went with that. We were able to do some facility enhancements like improving the airflow in our buildings. We were able to reinstall some part-time salaries for uh, uh, part-time salaries. We were able to also, as I mentioned before, provide refunds to our students for that unused portion of their room and board. Next slide. Um, I have a question here before I go to the next slide is that in, um, it says that we should have some funds by July 29th, but I also see that we are not supposed to start the application until August 18th. Is this a mistake? No, it is not. These are two separate pots of money. By July 29th, you will automatically receive uh, funds, emergency funds, based on a formula required by um, the federal government that um, is based on your estimated family contribution, your EFC, that's calculated from your FAFSA. You don't have to make an application. You don't have to do anything. You will get those funds immediately as a student. For the August 18th, however, funds, you do have to make an application and that application will be reviewed and your funds will be awarded based on the criteria for the application. So these are two separate pots of funds. So let me go back to the second um, tranche of funds, which was the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations. What was different about this is that students could use the funds from the second tranche to pay tuition and fees. That was a new allowable expense. For the college, same as before, but for us, what was new is that we could reimburse ourselves for some of that revenue that I showed you that we lost. So these were two very important amendments to this second group of stimulus funds. Next slide. The American Rescue Plan Act was our third uh, set of stimulus funds. Those were, uh, those were received in May of 21st, uh, May 2021. And again, we, have, we were able to give out the student aid and that's the aid that you are getting for, for the July 29th disbursement and for the application of funds uh, in August. Uh, similarly, the institution received a portion of those funds also for us to uh, be able to address some revenue losses and to make some uh, attention to our medical protocols to pay for some of the medical protocols that we have put into place. Next slide. So um, just a quick overview of, of all of these funds is a total of 22 point three million, uh, almost 22.4 million dollars. Uh, we've been able to do give, uh, as a result, students receive tuition and fee discounts during the academic year 2020-21 of 14%. 
we were able to do that with help from our stimulus. Uh, this year, we're gonna be able to give some subsidies for commuting students uh, for Lyft. Uh, I mentioned the room and board refunds, they came out of stimulus funds, and we were able to clear some student balances. We have been able to give out through private sources, emergency grants and scholarships. And uh, we've been able to do, as I mentioned, the tuition and fees discounts, the, again, emergency grants and mandatory fee refunds uh, totaling uh, from the federal funds as well. Next slide. Federal stimulus funds also went to support faculty and staff. Uh, I mentioned furloughs. We had a, 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 a fairly large number of furloughs that we were asking faculty and staff to take in order for us to reduce some of our expenses. We were able to restore some of those days to faculty and staff with the receipt of the McKinsey Scott funds. We were able to lift our hiring fee so people could hire their administrative assistants or fill positions in admissions or financial aid around the college. And very important, we were able to buy all of the protective, the personal protective equipment, make the uh, adjustments to our ventilation, upgrade filters, um, be able, as I said, to um, enact, implement the COVID testing, the cleaning, and of course, to provide technology for many of our workforce, staff, and faculty who are online teaching and to provide training for that online teaching. So those, this, those stimulus dollars were very important, not only in restoring our losses, but allowing us to make the ex extra expenditures we had to make to keep the campus safe and to keep us uh, able to do the teaching and learning at the high level at which Spelman is accustomed. Next slide. Um, before I go to that, there are a number of questions that are coming up about, uh, about, about funds. One question is, are there uh, discretionary funds for graduating students who may need help making their tuition obligations? How can faculty help connect these students to possible funding opportunities? I do want to mention that um, we did get some private funds this year that enabled us to, to help, I think about 15 students. Jesse Brooks, if you're on, if you can please um, help me out with that. I believe we helped about 15 students um, who were graduating clear their balances with the, uh, a gift that we got this year. Am I correct about that, Jesse? Yes, Dr. Campbell, that is, that is correct. Yes. Thank you. Another question that has, has um, come up, when will students hear back about the general scholarship application if they apply before the priority date? Ingrid Hayes, you're on the call. Can you share with us anything about when students can hear back from their general scholarship application? Thank you for the question, Dr. Campbell. The financial aid office is actively reviewing those scholarships and what's available. Um, and as they're able to clear them out and notify recipients, they are doing that. In some cases, um, it requires a committee review. So they're convening the re review. So they are working on those actively uh, through um, the next several weeks as we lead into the fall semester. Uh, we cannot guarantee that all of them uh, will be done uh, by the first payment deadline, but that is, we are working to get as many cleared as possible by that date, but they, some of them may um, move into the fall semester before we're able to confirm and notify students. Thank you. I have another question here that says, has Spelman made any plans to deal with another possible outbreak of COVID? That's a very good question. The most important plan that we have put into place is to require vaccinations. That is the single most important thing that we can do is be vaccinated. Number two, we do have for those 
who are who cannot be vaccinated for medical reasons, we have um, uh, allowed exempt exemptions. They are reviewed on a case by case basis uh, for medical reasons and religious reasons. And so we do have a very tiny percentage of students who will be on campus who are not vaccinated and they will be required to undergo a testing regimen. We are also requiring for the first month for the entire month of August that students, faculty and staff wear masks everywhere, indoors, outdoors, in class, obviously except when you're eating or when you're in your privately in your, um, in your dorm room, your residence hall room. We have, we, we have set aside some spaces for those students who test uh, positive, who would have to be isolated. And for those students who are identified in contact tracing, who would have to be quarantined. So we're continuing with our medical protocols, even though we are requiring everybody to be vaccinated, we are still keeping our medical protocols in place. And even for those who are vaccinated, we will have periodic testing just to make sure that we have keep an eye out for any possible outbreaks on campus. But that is a very good question. Thank you. I'm glad you asked. Um, I have another question about vaccinations. If we only have our first vaccination, should we upload ASAP or wait until our second dose? Please wait until your second dose. Um, you have until July 30th, so um, hopefully you will have your second dose by, uh, by then, but we'd like to have your complete proof of vaccination, so that would be very helpful to us. Um, when do we hear about waiver approvals? I think that's another question that has come up, and I believe that we those approvals are, are if they're approvals, for um, vaccination exemptions, they should be going out as they're made. And am I correct about that? Uh, I'm going to ask Dawn Alston. Our, our VP of Student Affairs is on vacation. So I'm going to turn to Dawn Alston and say, I believe that once exemptions have been approved, we have notified people of them as they happen. Yes, that's correct. And typically, it's in within um, five days of the submission. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So I have a question here about why are you not dividing the automatic emergency funds equally among students when all of us were equally affected by the pandemic? And one of the one, one of the things that we have faced with federal funds is that we are strictly limited. Um, by, in, by the way in which we are able to um, allocate those funds. And Dawn, I'm gonna ask you um, also to respond to that. Uh, we have to follow certain guidelines. And what are those guidelines for the dispersal of emergency funds? Sure, thank you, Dr. Campbell. That was a great question. The federal government actually put into place a requirement that we must prove that we consider the neediest students first um, as we disperse the funds. So this is why um, you, you notice that we use the EFC or the expected family contribution as our measure uh, in determining how we will disperse the funds. Thank you. And I'm gonna have one, I'm gonna uh, answer one more question before I go back to our, our PowerPoint. And do we know where the Moderna vaccine stands in terms of efficacy against the Alpha and Delta variant of COVID-19? Asking because so many of our population have had the Moderna vaccine, myself included. Yes, that study is underway. We should have results from that study in the next two to three weeks is what I am told. Um, once we know that, we will certainly make that information known more widely, what the um, efficacy is against the alpha and the delta variant. So let me turn back to our topic uh, for this evening, which is where did the money go? And focus now on our private 
fundraising. That is the fundraising that we generated as a result of our capital campaign. And I will tell you, when, the, when COVID started, um, we really thought that that was the end of our capital campaign. Uh, we weren't able to go visit donors. We weren't able to make personalized requests. We weren't able to bring people to the campus to show them how phenomenal Spelman was and have them talk to students and to faculty and to learn about the different programs in person. So we made an extra special effort to make sure that we got the word out for our campaign because we believe so much in the goals that we were supporting. One, deliver the Spelman pro promise, make, make it possible for every student who enrolls in Spelman to, to graduate by raising, uh, by raising scholarship funds. Elevate the Spelman difference, support our faculty. Support our faculty with professional development support, with endowed uh, professorships, and, and by encouraging strategic partnerships that aid them in their research. Enhance operational excellence. Upgrade our technology infrastructure, automate our processes, streamline Spelman so that it, it functions in a much more supportive way for our students and our faculty and staff. And finally, promote academic innovation. Add those cutting edge programs that keep Spelman uh, competitive and build a new academic facility that is state of the art and upgrade our facilities that are, are that need upgrading. So those were our goals. We felt, felt so strongly about them that we continued to press very hard on our, on our goals during our capital campaign. Next slide. So I, wanna, I want to uh, begin by um, reporting on our progress with our first goal, which was to deliver the Spelman prom promise. Our goal was to raise $75 million in new scholarship funds, and we have raised $119 million in new scholarship funds. That has given us more scholarship funds in general, more full, full scholarships, and we will continue to press on this until the end of the campaign. This is our number one priority is to get more financial aid in for our students. Next slide. Our, 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 our second goal was to elevate the Spelman difference. That is to support our faculty. We had a goal of adding uh, 10 to 12 new endowed professorships. I'm very proud to say that we've added five three in arts and vis visual culture, one in economics, one in women's study, and we're still um, got a number pending and we aim to get to that uh, 10 to 12 in support of our faculty. And um, in terms of faculty uh, development, we've also raised significant funds. Next slide. Enhance operational excellence. Here is here again, the investing in our staff and our faculty, we've raised funds for that. And we're really terrifically uh, proud of the work that our 25 at 25 alumni initiative has accomplished by creating a technology innovation fund that has just allowed us to do the most extraordinary things. We have completely replaced our fiber optic network. We have completely upgraded our email system. We've upgraded our, our banner. We, we are going to install a new learning management system. We're going to automate our uh, cross, um, cross campus registration processes. Um, this has been a, a terrifically uh, successful part of our strategic plan. Next slide. And promote academic innovation. We have added some spectacular new academic programs. Uh, you can read the list there, among them art history and curatorial studies, our relationship with the Broad Institute of Biomedical Research, which is the MIT Harvard um, uh, program. We're setting up a center for black entrepreneurship uh, with IBM, a center for quantum computing, Throughout the AUC, we have a data science initiative and here at Spelman, our, thanks to Dr. Tiffany Oliver, we had a great, and others who were mentors a great data science virtual internships. We're building our economics department, our food, uh, strengthening our food studies, our Institute for Study of Gender and Sexual Identity, and of course, our beloved social justice program that is led by Dr. Cynthia Spence. 
all of these programs receive funding in the course of our, our capital campaign and a great deal of it during the COVID period. Um, in addition to that, we're enriching the uh, Spelman College Museum of Fine Art and providing other research, uh, research opportunities. Next slide. Key to this is building a new academic facility. We need faculty offices. We need an expanded uh, museum space. We need a space for our innovation lab, which has been incredibly successful. And we're about, uh, we're, uh, we're about almost 80% to our final figure. And we are forging ahead and keep your fingers crossed that we'll have a groundbreaking later in the fall. Next slide. Very unexpectedly, we received gifts from uh, se uh, several sources, uh, Bank of America, Hobson Lucas Family Foundation, Latanya Richardson Jackson, and her spouse, Samuel Jackson, um, to be able to, to do a wonderful renovation of the theater spaces in Rockefeller Fine Arts. So that will, that will break ground and be underway in the fall as well. Uh, next slide. And again, thanks to our alumni and our alumni trustees and our friends of the college and, and, and other donors, we have really ramped up our annual fund giving um, so that uh, I was asked the question, you know, how are we, what are we going to do for the future? This increased giving for annual fund allows us again to set aside funds for a rainy day like COVID. COVID was a very, it was more than a rainy day. It was a thunderstorm and a hurricane uh, kind of day. But um, we have been, because of this, this kind of giving, just incredible, incredibly generous giving from our trustees, our alumni and our friends of the college, we've been able to really bolster our, our annual fund giving and strengthen, um, strengthen the college. I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna take a look at some of the questions that have, have come in and, and answer some of those questions. Let me take a look. Several questions about whether there will be updates to building that don't have air conditioning as well as whether there will be new student housing being built. Let me talk about new student housing. Just today, uh, we have selected our master planners who will come to campus in the fall to begin the very serious planning for what we will do with student housing. There are some instances where we think student housing can be existing student housing can be expanded. There are some instances where we think existing student housing may be air conditioned. But there are also some instances where we think we need brand new student housing. And that's a very expensive venture, but we think we, but we definitely have to explore it. And there's also the possibility that we might consider purchasing housing that is already built, that might be in close proximity to the college, that would be safe, and we think would suit our needs. We are exploring each and every one of those options very carefully. And I see the announcement that says, that doesn't help me for next month. It does not help you for next month. And that we are painfully aware of the fact that all of these sort of solutions are not solutions that are going to solve the housing shortage for this year. But it does say that the college is taking all the steps to begin to solve this problem in the middle term and in the, the longer term. There are several questions uh, for uh, another topic. Will some of the full ride scholarships provide assistance to continuing students? Uh, Ingrid, uh, I'm gonna call on you again since your division uh, financial aid comes under your division. Can you share with us about that? Certainly. So it really depends on when we receive the awards, what the donors specific requirements were and how it's been 
set up to be used. So uh, there are students who are returning students who may have received awards. Sometimes if an award goes unused for some reason, then the financial aid office does reallocate those. For example, if we had a first year student who received the award, but that student did not return, then the final three years of that student's award would be uh, provided to another student, uh, a, a rising so another rising sophomore student. So that does happen on occasion, uh, not with significant frequency, uh, just to be candid about it. But um, when possible, we do, we usually have a multi layered approach to trying to help identify resources for students. So uh, we, where we can, we do make those available um, sometimes to our returning students, but those full rides generally go to first year students that are coming into uh, our school. And, and I just wanna underscore what uh, Ingrid has said. Thank you, Ingrid. These are not our, our, our decisions. These are the restrictions that the donors have placed on the funds. And we, have, we are bound by those restrictions. I have a question about international students. Uh, Dawn, are international students included in the emergency federal funds? Yes, they are. Um, so they were included in the uh, automatic distribution of funds. Um, and are also eligible to apply for uh, emergency grants um, when they open on August the 18th. Thank you. Um, I have a question. When will we hear about a shuttle or other means of transportation for students who are off campus and in need of transportation? Um, Dawn, do you want to speak to uh, the transportation arrangements that will be made for, for students? Sure, there are several options. Um, we actually just inked a partnership with, Link, with uh, Lyft, um, which will provide uh, up to 500 uh, students a uh, subsidy for Lyft rides in the amount of $400 for the year. Um, we will be meeting with them next week in order to um, tie down the details about how you would apply for those um, and how you will use them. So look for some information um, in the next couple of weeks about that. Uh, we also provide um, discounted MARTA cards, which you can purchase directly from the cashier's office. Uh, and the um, MARTA cards, I believe, are $69 um, for, for rides for the month. Thank you. I think we have one more slide, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, Ingrid. So let's go to our last slide uh, before I, 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 I take any more questions so I can get to this one last point. So um, in terms of Spellman uh, providing support for students, uh, one last thing that we did is that as we were considering the tuition rates, for 2021 and 2022, we went back to 2017, 2018. And the tuition and mandatory fees were 28,181. And those are the fees that we're using for 2021, 2022. So we actually did a tuition reset for this year so that we pulled back the, the, the tuition, which was also another form of relief. So this tuition reset this year, and last year the discount of 14% were two ways in which we used the uh, variable tuition rate to also provide support for our Spelman students. I see that we have one minute left. Um, I have lots more questions here in the, in the queue uh, uh, to, to look at. And so I know we're not, we're not able to get to all of our questions this evening, which is, happens to us every time we do a town hall, but we will collect these questions immediately after the town hall. They will be sorted. They will be directed to uh, the senior team who's most um, appropriate 
to answer these questions and we will get answers back to you as soon as possible. I want, once again, I wanna thank you for joining us. We had, it looks like we had a total of about 460 people. Um, it's so good to be with you and to hear your voice and to get your feedback. Um, we cannot wait to see you uh, in, the, in the fall when you come back, in the summer when you come back. We'll have one more uh, summer town hall on August 5th, uh, 2021. We'll let you know what the topic is as we get closer to that time. I'm going to take a couple of weeks off on vacation and get myself ready and prepared to come back for, uh, for our new semester and stand out there in front of the gates and, and welcome you personally. Until then, be safe, be well, be the light, and keep the faith.